I think that it's safe to say that if you are a Star Trek fan, you like the look of Kirk's original Enterprise. The ship featured prominently in the original series, and with some changes to its design, changes varying in intensity, appeared also in Star Trek Discovery, as well as the prequel to the original series, Strange New Worlds. Discovery being a prequel to Strange New Worlds, but also kind of its own thing? Uh, though the ship's appearance in these other shows is far more controversial among fans, as are the shows. Everybody pretty much agrees TOS is pretty good, pretty solid. Of course, as this is the first Star Trek ship that we see ever, and we see the ship engaged in multiple standoffs against the ships of many alien races, and as the plot requires, the ship either does very good or very badly. If the story calls for an underdog, the Enterprise is the underdog. The story calls for a big bruiser, the Enterprise is that big bruiser. So basically, the answer to the question which the video title asks can be answered as, as powerful as the plot requires. But that answer is no fun. So let's nerd the crap out of this. First, I think it's a good idea to look over the ships which were the contemporaries in rival fleets during the years where the Constitution class was in its prime. Note that we're looking at the ships which came the closest to matching the Connie in capability. Not every ship in the navies of rival powers to the Federation or every alien starship that the Enterprise found during the original show. This does not mean the most powerful ship in every alien's race's fleet will be compared here. This is because the, the Constitution was only, said with air quotes because you can't see my hands, a heavy cruiser, and the larger navies tended to field proper battleships, while the smaller navies, which we won't be discussing except for one exception, didn't have something that was a match for the Constitution. So, with the explanation out of the way, let's look at probably the most iconic contemporary vessel of the time, the Klingon D-7 class battlecruiser, a ship which was more compact than the Constitution in appearance thanks to lacking much of the crew amenities and scientific facilities of the larger Federation cruiser. In terms of combat capabilities, though, the D-7 compared generally evenly to the Constitution, the ship was armed with a very different form of combat in mind, with a focus on heavy beam weapons and torpedo armament versus the more conventional and lower-powered individual weapon mounts of the Kani. The Constitution boasted over double the number of phaser banks to her Klingon rival's disruptors, and of those most were twin mounts versus the single mountings of the D-7. So, which was the more powerful in a matchup? Well, the D-7 was a heavy hitter up front, which lacked much staying power after the initial engagement, thanks to its poor arcs of fire and generally weak aft shields and weapons. Conversely, the Constitution possessed strong shields and weaker but better balanced weapons with good all-around arcs of fire. The two ships were generally similar in terms of maneuverability, despite the smaller size of the D-7. So thus, in combat, the winner would largely depend upon who got a lucky shot first, who had friendly vessels supporting it, if one side or the other was surprised, or any other of a dozen potential events which could give one ship or another an advantage. But in my opinion, the Constitution was the superior vessel due to her better balance of weapons and greater survivability in combat due to her greater shielding and weapons coverage. The Starfleet ship was also slightly faster at warp, and could sustain this higher speed for a little bit longer. But given that the D-7 took fewer resources, and was part of a much more streamlined fleet, there were always far more D-7s out there than there were Connies, so the individually better ship is more likely to come across numerically superior enemies. For the Romulan Star Empire, for you know, my own amusement, I was considering putting the Romulan Stormbird class, their version of the D7 given to them by the Klingons as part of a technology exchange as their entry on this list. But, although that would have kept video length down a bit, it seemed like cheating, 
and the Star Empire really only has the one iconic design in the period, and it would be a shame not to mention it here. The Romulan Bird of Prey of the 2260s was a compact design. It was very small, in fact, and the ship's firepower was hardly anything noteworthy, amounting to a small number of laser emitters and old-fashioned atomic-tipped missiles. And the ship's speed at warp was pathetic, much the same being true of her shield strength, which was quite weak as well. This was due to the ship's reliance on older designs of engines that were several generations out of date. So it's easy to say that the Constitution wins in this matchup, yeah? Well, if you've seen much of the original show, and the episode where the ship shows most prominently is one of the best, you know that the Bird of Prey has two major aces up its sleeve, which makes the vessel a major threat for any Starfleet ship, even a Constitution. These being an advanced cloaking device which allowed it to hide from any opponent, as well as a powerful plasma cannon which delivered incredible amounts of damage, enough to outright destroy multiple Starfleet ships at once in a single shot, or else obliterate a well-defended ground installation. So if the Romulan commander is able to get a surprise shot off, the Connie is dead. But, if for some reason the Constitution class is not destroyed in this hypothetical matchup, perhaps being able to evade the Bird of Prey's plasma shot, then the battle becomes essentially a question of if the Bird of Prey can recloak in time to escape the Starfleet ship's return fire, as otherwise, as was touched on, the Bird of Prey is very underarmed and weak for its size, and would be an easy target for the Constitution. So how does the Bird of Prey compare in a matchup, then? Well, it's highly situationally dependent, and largely boils down to who gets the first shot off which hits. Aside from the Klingon and Romulan designs, which matched the Constitution, there did exist several designs in service with other races and governments around the galaxy which could be considered a contemporary of the Starfleet ship, but unfortunately, we know very little about these designs, so they'll be kind of lumped together and covered in brief here before we move on to mentioning the ships, which can be considered to match the Constitution in Starfleet service in the period. First, we're going to look at the Gorn Cruiser, the ship that's been on screen. Uh, we see this vessel in a single episode of the original series, and at some distance to the Enterprise, so we don't really know what it looks like. From the brief fight between the two ships, we can conclude that the Gorn Cruiser is roughly comparable to the Constitution, though. And that's about it. Next, we have the Tholian Web Spinner, an odd-looking design which, while much smaller than the Connie, and that has a rather odd doctrine behind it, is still capable. But I don't really consider it to be much of a match against the Constitution, as the ship virtually requires other ships of her class in order to utilize her greatest advantage over other ships, that being her energy web spinner. This concludes our brief look at other races' rivals to the Connie. Note that there are other ships out there, but they're far less popular in the public's mind, or they massively overmatch the Enterprise, so they won't be mentioned here just for time. Okay, and finally for this longer than it needs to be video, we come to the ships in Starfleet which are roughly comparable to the Constitution. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that Starfleet has no other ships that can match the Connie, and you'd be partially correct, as for the most part Starfleet builds ships sensibly to fit its broader fleet, but there are a few ships in the Force which are roughly similar in role and overall capability to the Constitution. Starfleet during the period is not afraid to build a few ships to test out ideas, even if they do kind of take a role from existing ships. First, let's look at the Pioneer-class cruiser, a compact design of Starship which was meant to act as a cheaper alternative to the Constitution class, which sacrificed some endurance, scientific capacity, and crew amenities to keep costs down while still maintaining significant combat capabilities on par or slightly below those of the Constitution. The type being built as the hot piece with the Klingon Empire increased in intensity during the 2260s, let's say. 
These increases in tensions led some in Starfleet to argue that the greater non-combat abilities of the Constitution were now redundant as the class was increasingly utilized squaring off against the Klingons, and that a more combat-focused class would be a better use of resources, leading to the launch of a few examples of the Pioneer class. In service, though, the ship was found to be something of a disappointment due to its virtual sole utility as a combat vessel. This meant that the design was less well-suited to the traditional roles of a cruiser in Starfleet, colonial support, patrol, law enforcement, and exploratory roles, roles that the Connie was ideally suited to. Basically, 99% of the time, would you rather have something that can do a little bit of everything and is a good combat ship, or a ship that can do none of those things, but for the 1% of the time when you need a combat ship, it's as effective as that ship that can do other things. Yes, yeah, Starfleet didn't like it either, and they only commissioned a few of them, and they had a fairly short life. The Ranger-class cruiser was built several years later than the Pioneer. This design was intended to act as a general-purpose cruiser, merging the heavy and light cruiser roles into a single design. In this, the ship would fail, being found to be rather expensive for the light cruiser duty, while also being too lightly armed to adequately fulfill the heavy cruiser role. Of the two designs, I consider the Pioneer class to be closer to the Connie in a combat matchup. This should be no surprise, though, as the design was built to essentially have similar, if not identical, abilities to the Constitution where it came to warfighting while being cheaper by shedding excess capabilities and features from the larger, better balanced ship. So then, what does this longer than necessary examination of the ships which served in similar roles at the same time as the Constitution class mean in regards to answering the question of how strong the ship is when compared to these designs? And yes, that sentence is a bit of a mess and accomplished very little. It, the whole video is a mess and accomplishes very little. Uh, seriously, that, though, now that we've examined the contemporaries of the Connie, we can now answer the question of how powerful the ship was in her day. As we've seen by looking at all the ships that we've looked at, the Connie was fairly powerful, possessing significant combat abilities and strong shields which would allow the vessel to outlast or escape her opponent in a fight as needed. But, barring an out-of-context problem, such as possessing the ability to turn invisible and fire a superweapon in a surprise attack, the Constitution should compare fairly well to mainline vessels in foreign fleets. But in a more realistic example, all the ships we have looked at have been built to serve in different roles and variations from that envisioned for the Connie. The D-7 is a more rapid-strike vessel with little staying power, but serious first-strike potential. The Romulan Bird of Prey is weak, conventionally, but this is made up for her possession of a cloaking device and plasma cannon to destroy targets in a single massive strike. The Gorn Cruiser is capable, but we don't know enough about it to make much more of a determination than that. The Tholian Web Spinner is weak individually, but very strong when working in a group. And finally, the Pioneer and Ranger classes are interesting designs meant specifically to encroach upon the role of the Connie in Starfleet, but which failed for a number of reasons. So yeah, I'd say the Constitution is pretty good for what it was intended to do all around, but, you know, so were the ships that it matched up against. You, typically, you build the ship to suit your needs, and not all of those needs align perfectly. What works best for Starfleet that leads them to build the Constitution might not have worked for the Klingons, or the Romulans, or the Gorn, or the Tholian, or anybody else. You build for what you need. Uh, thank you for watching this video. You probably could tell, but uh, it's been hotter than blazes here, and um, for some reason the air conditioning is set incredibly low here. So that means the aircon is coming on about every five minutes for about 15 minutes at a time because the air conditioner is incredibly sensitive and is placed directly in the sun. So the temperature drops a degree, it kicks on and gets the temperature back up, turns off, the sun heats the sensor up. It's a big issue. 
Uh, so I'm recording this in bits and frantically pressing the pause button. But you might have heard some kind of whoomp as the fan started off and on. So hopefully all the audio lines up to your satisfaction. Uh, if it does and you found yourself enjoying the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video, drop a comment uh, about what you thought of the video. Of course, that's always welcome. Uh, yeah, and all that stuff. I, I really don't have time to say much else other than that. So, you know, have a good day before the air conditioning kicks on. I think I, I think I've done it. Bye.